Welcome back to another Fuel Up Classic video. And I have to start this one with a huge thank you to each and every one of you, because we've just hit 5,000 subscribers. And that just seems like an unbelievable number to me. I started the channel about nine months ago, and I really hope you're enjoying the content and there's plenty more to come. But I was in a bit of a celebratory mood when we hit that 5,000 subscriber number, and I've gone and bought another car and I'm sure you can guess exactly what it is. It is a British icon. It's probably the most stereotypical British sports car out there. It is, of course, the MGB GT. Now, this car, really, I wasn't meant to purchase. It just came my way. I've always really liked them. Uh, I've been associated with MGs for a little while now, and I love the way they drive. But it's going to be a long time before I'm behind the wheel of this car because it's very much a project and it joins a long list of projects that I seem to be mounting up at the moment. Some of them I haven't even shown to you guys yet. There's more to come, but we will get round to doing something with this car. It's a really early 1966 MGB GT. That's why I was most drawn to it. I love these early cars. It's 57 years old now. Uh, the previous owner unfortunately passed away and um, the family who inherited the car couldn't take the restoration project on, so I've promised I'd do something with it. So I think the best thing we can do is just have a quick look around the car now. I'll show you some of its worst areas, but it's not all doom and gloom, and I'm a sucker for a classic that needs a little bit of TLC. It makes no financial sense whatsoever to restore this car, but I really want to save it. So let's have a quick look around it. I'll show you some of the worst places on the car and um, talk you through some of my initial plans for this MGB. So I'd love to say that this car runs and drives, but it arrived with me with no keys. So truthfully, I've got no idea whether it runs or not, but that's really only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this car. There are some fairly major bodywork issues with the car as well. You may have already noticed the bonnet is not shut. That's because I can't get it open again when it shuts. So we're leaving it just propped up for now. It also doesn't fit properly. It's a little bit of a shame because it is an aluminium bonnet, but it's been damaged and I think we're gonna have to have a replacement bonnet. Under the bonnet, well, I think it's fair to say that the previous owners of this cars have been enthusiastic DIYers. Now, usually I don't mind that at all, but unfortunately it seems in this case, they were enthusiastically trying to wire this car up, add additional things, and it has some pretty scary looking wiring under the bonnet, under the dashboard, and it's all just dangerous, taped together, it all needs to come out and start again, basically, which is gonna be a huge learning curve for me because I know very little about wiring, but I get the feeling that I'm gonna learn an awful lot with this car. And that's the great thing about an MGB. Yes, this car needs work, but it's probably one of the best supported classic cars out there. It makes a great entry level classic to anybody. You don't need to buy one that's probably in this kind of state, but if you buy a good one, they are really easy to maintain. Almost everything is available on a next day delivery basis, relatively cheaply as well. And there's a support network that spans the entire globe for these cars. They really are that popular. I love them, but uh, as I say, there's a long way to go with this one. And as you come around the car, you'll probably notice as well, there's a number of bodywork issues. We've got corrosion here and there. This car did have stainless steel seal covers on it. It is the only job that I've done so far was to take them off. I just couldn't help myself. And I, I really wanted to see what was behind there. The seal structure on a B is quite a complex arrangement. It is integral to the structure of the car. And I was convinced that there wouldn't be much metal work behind those covers. But to my surprise, there is some metal there. It is all still relatively solid. And it seems to be that the covers were put on because of a damaged sill rather than one that's completely corroded out. But I'm sure as we get this car up in the air, poke around more, we're gonna find a lot more corrosion in hidden places. It's a 57 year old British classic. Of course, there's gonna be rust. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you may have already noticed there's a lovely patch of corrosion down here at the bottom of the door. Uh, it could be savable, 
but um, it might actually be worth just getting a complete new door when the time comes. There's also a scrape here and a scrape here. Looks like someone's had a bit of a disagreement with a brick wall somewhere. Um, so we've got to get those things sorted as well. But my plan with this car really is to deal with making it safe and enjoyable first. The cosmetic things, well, at least for this summer, if we get it back on the road, I don't really care how it looks. It's all about how this car drives. And um, I like having a car that really I don't have to be too precious about. And I certainly don't need to be precious about this one. I can leave it almost anywhere. So it's gonna be a staged process. It's certainly not gonna be a full blown restoration with this car. I think we're looking at a mechanical recommissioning and then we'll start to use and enjoy the car and tidy it up as we go along. That's my plan anyway, but we all know that these things can spiral out of control very quickly, but that's the initial plan for this car. And as we go round as well, you'll notice there's a few other little nicks and dents here and there, but on the whole, it's not that bad. It's, the roof is absolutely fine, apart from this rather hideous 1980s aerial that's been added. It's nearly poked my eye out twice when I'm opening the, the tailgate, so that's gonna go. That's gonna go today as soon as I stop filming this video, because I hate looking at it. Um, and then we get round to the rear tailgate. Well. That's probably one of the worst things. It's completely rotted out at the back here. I have had a quick look in the boot or in the trunk, if you're watching it in other parts of the world, whatever you may call it. And luckily it is all solid. I think we got to this car just in time because it's really only surface corrosion in there. But I think maybe another six, 12 months of water sat in there. We could be looking at a whole different ball game in terms of the restoration. The chrome work, well, it's pretty tired, it's pretty pitted. Um, again, cosmetically, that's something that's gonna have to come later on, uh, but it will certainly need replacing as we go on. And you'll probably see the rear tailgate here, which has definitely been letting water into that boot area, but it's completely shot along the bottom. Um, I could almost break it off in my hand. So it, it's gone, and it's all gone on the top here as well. So we are gonna to have to have a replacement tailgate, I think, as a matter of urgency. As I say, at the moment, it's letting that water ingress into the cabin. It's gonna cause more issues. And it's probably the most unsightly area of the whole car as well. So we'll get that one sorted out fairly quickly as well. So as you come around here to this sort of rear three quarter panel, this is probably the area that's going to meet the most immediate attention. It's a really common rust spot on an MGB. The water sits in here over a course of years and rots through. That's what's happened with this car. And I feel like if we leave it, especially for another winter, that we're gonna to start to see complete holes here. So this panel will need to be sorted out fairly soon. Don't know what happened to the rear light. It's completely missing. It's not in the car. I've been all the way through. So obviously we'll have to get that replaced as well, but that's a very minor issue in the grand scheme of things. And as you come further around the driver's side of the car, well, again, there's evidence where those seal covers were. We've got corrosion at the end of the seals and up into the wheel arch there, but it could be uh, salvageable before we start looking at complete restorations of the seal and that kind of thing. Uh, and on the whole, there's not too much going on with the rest of this driver's side. There's a bit of a dent in that front wing there, but we can forgive it for that. So if we move to the inside, well, it does look a bit of a mess in here. There's lots of remnants of additional electric things that have been added. I think this is some sort of USB phone charger thing, but none of it's wired up. It's all taped up. Glove box is hanging off. There was a pretty hideous CD player fitted here. It basically fell out in my hand, so I've chucked that. Um, these additional gauges, nothing seems to work. In fact, none of these are actually connected to anything, so not quite sure what's going on there. Um, but, and as I say, there's a few remnants here of some additional things that have been added, which we'll check when we get this car running and tested whether anything works. But I'd really like to return the interior of this car to original because these early MGs have a really lovely, classy, very stereotypical 1960s interior. I don't mind the steering wheel. It is a Motolita wood rim steering wheel, but the 
ones that came originally on this car I think look fantastic. We'll have the original speaker box and speaker grille fitted out. We might do some modern upgrades and maybe get a bit of a Bluetooth speaker in there, um, get the blanking plate for here, paint all this, tidy it up. Really everything in here is just cosmetic. I'm not too concerned about it. The seats are in good condition, the carpets are in good condition, although it has had um, I'm not quite sure what it's made of, but some form of soundproofing heavily glued down to the floor pans. And I'm really not looking forward to trying to scrape all that off, but that's a job that can come later on in the year. I just really want to get on with this project now. I'm excited by it. Now it's here, I've looked around the car and I've shared it with you guys. I really need to make the time and the effort to get this British classic back on the road even if it won't be a show winner for many, many years to come, perhaps. I'm just excited to get out and enjoy it. So this is just a very quick introductory video to my new project car, which, as I say, joins the long list of other projects that I need to get round to doing. But it was also just a quick video to say thank you once again to 5,000 of you. I still can't believe that number and it's still growing and I really hope we can keep pushing forward and the channel grows and crucially, people are enjoying the content that's being put out there. Now, it isn't all doom and gloom with this car. I might have painted a fairly negative picture, but I am really excited about getting this car back on the road. It deserves to be put back on the road. And I happened to find under the passenger seat when I was clearing out the vast amount of rubbish in here, a rather extensive history file. So there's evidence here that this car has really been loved. It might be sort of 10 plus years old since it had any real attention and care but I can see from this bulging folder of invoices, bills, receipts, and everything else, that this car was really loved at one point. And I hope to do the same. I hope to bring it back. There's some notable stuff in here. It looks like it had a full engine rebuild about 20,000 miles ago. Now, I've got no idea what condition any of the mechanics are in, because as I say, I can't start it. I haven't got a key at the moment. So that's my first job for today, is I'm gonna change the ignition barrel, get a new batteries hooked up on it, and see if we can coax this car into life. I think it was probably last on the road about 10 years ago, maybe a little bit less, but it certainly hasn't covered many miles since then. And it certainly hasn't turned a wheel for at least four or five years. So we're gonna come across some strange things with this car, I'm sure, but I'll be documenting it as we go along. And I really hope you guys enjoy the journey as well. There's plenty more videos to come on the channel. If you haven't seen some of the other videos, go and check them out, see if they're for you. There's gonna be an abundance of classics always on the channel from a variety of the earliest stuff right the way through to modern classics, cheap stuff, more expensive stuff, and stuff in the middle as well. And of course, now we're starting to throw in some project cars as well. And I'll introduce you to a few more more of then as and when I find the time to get onto them because I really need to show you as they're progressing rather than just another car to join the pile. But here's the MGB. I hope you guys all like it and thank you very much for watching the videos so far.